Okay. Thank you very much. So it seems that I'm trying a new system where the three central screens will show different slides. They are supposed to follow some order, but I think this is the this is the main one. Okay. So so we had this theorem to um, I think I, I mentioned it that that if there is a flat projective morphism with stable fibers and that's reduced, and that sort of a problem was that if you are looking at the families of curves and a flat projective morphism whose fibers are stable curved, that's exactly what we want in a moduli theory. But in higher dimensions, this is, is not true. And so there were three equivalent conditions. The first one is that the volume is locally constant. You know, just the self-intersection of, of the canonical class. Then the second is that the plurigenera are locally really constant. You should view this as some very nice thing which we don't necessarily need in a moduli theory, but it's nice to have. And, then, and the third condition is that if you look at this relative dualizing sheet, if you take its m's power, now the m's power is pretty bad because the relative dualizing sheet need not be locally free. So then, then instead of taking the m's power, take its double dual, may, may make it, 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 it reflexive that that's flat and commutes with base change. And so I would like to, to explain the, the proof that these three are indeed equivalent. Okay, so it seems to be working. Yeah. And so uh, le let's see three implies two, okay? And, and so, so, so I wrote down condition three. Uh, again, that, that, uh, that these powers are flat and commute uh, with base change. Now, for commuting with base change, the most important thing is that, that if you restrict it to the fiber, then you get the, the, the expected thing, and so then, then it is pretty much equivalent to, to, to saying that if you just look at the dualizing sheaf of the fiber and you look at its reflexive m's power, then, then you get some sheaves that these form a flat family. And so then, of course, the, 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 then of course the Euler characteristic is then locally constant. Now, if this exponent is two, then, uh, then we expect that these sheaves have no higher yeah, homologies. So certainly in the smooth case, that comes out of Kodaira's vanishing theorem, because it's so two times the canonical class is the canonical class plus the canonical class, and we are assuming that the canonical class is ample. Now, now we have some some so, so, you know, issues here the, the, the sort of it's harder vanishing theorem so the the as come out of feedback is not enough here it needs something things stronger but it's okay yeah so so that means that for m at least two we we we, we have the order characteristics locally constant and there are no higher yeah, cohomologies and so that means that h zero has to be has to be locally constant. Now, if m equals one, well, it's a different rand story. So in the smooth case, it comes out of Hodge theory, yeah, that, that uh, we expect that, in fact, the cohomology groups of the dualizing sheaf, they should be dual to some cohomology groups of the structure sheaf. Uh, and now, the, 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 then the cohomology group of the, st the, group of, of the structure sheaf, they are locally constant, and it Essentially, this is what the notion of Dubois singularities was in, in, uh, invented, and it was proved with Kovac that these semi log canonical singularities, they are Dubois. So, so that means that the cohomology groups of the structure shift, they are locally constant. Now, I should say that, they, the, 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 that this duality that, that we say we he expect is not true here because because semi log canonical singularities do not have to be to, to be, be, be co Macaulay. But but sort of we understand how much non co Macaulay it is. You have to work on it. But, but sort of basically this argument meant, meant works. So you can sort of, of, of 
pretend that this duality works out. Okay, now uh, let, let's try to see some, some uh, hmm. this is not the slide I expected, but sort of let's go ahead, okay. <laughs> and so it sort of might be just sort of my doing, okay, okay, yes. And so, so uh, now then uh, be, before looking at the other their cases, I would like to, to just look at some examples. So that, so, 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 so. How can it happen that, that something is, for instance, Cartier in every fiber, but in fact not Cartier, okay? So, so let's start that with uh, this example. I have a threefold, which is uh, so the, the, the quadricone, I mean, it's just an affine by threefold, and I map it to, I project it by u minus v, it's just, so the numbers work out better. And then I look at the divisor, x equals u equals 0 and y equals 0, just the union of two planes that meet at the origin. Now, uh, then if t is non-zero, then the fiber is smooth, and so the, 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 then I get a Cartier t a d a divisor, and if I come, and so on, on Sometimes smooth quadric surface, I get uh, just two disjoint lines. So if I look at the, at the projectivization, then the self-intersection is zero. If I set T equals zero, uh, then the fiber is a quadric cone, and I have two lines that meet at the vertex, of course. Now, then that's a hyperplane section, and so it's a Cartier divisor, and the self-intersection is two, okay? So then here, if I sort of projectivize this example right, then I get this family of surfaces, and there is a divisor on it that's Cartier on every fiber, but sort of visibly not Cartier because the self-intersection of it actually jumps, okay? So, so these are exactly the problems that we have to deal with, that, that similar things can happen with the canonical class. Now, uh, let's see from the point of view of ideals uh, what happens. If you write down the ideal, the ideal of D, just inside three space, then you get this, but for us, x, y equals u, v. So that means I can throw away x, y. So that, that means if I'm on x, then, oops. Okay, and so if I'm on x, then I'm dealing with this ideal generated by three elements, so you see it's not a Cartier divisor, it needs three generator. But if I look at the central fiber, where the u equals v, and so then the idea just becomes this, x u, u by u square, and you see that where well, this is contained in u, and the quotient has length one. So this idea, this has an embedded point, an embedded prime exactly at the origin, and if I get rid of it, then I get u. So that means the divisor sees this, okay? But if you look at the ideal theory, then I get this, this smaller idea. So, so that's exactly the problem, that somehow if I restrict it as a divisor, as a classical so geometer would, then I would just get the idea generated by U. But if I restrict the ideal, then I, then, then I have some embedded points. So these are what we have to, to deal with. Now, from the sheaf theoretic point of view, I start with a reflexive sheaf. Uh, let's assume it's locally free in co-dimension one in all fibers. So, so that uh, means that when I restrict, it's still locally free in a, a large set. Now, if I restrict to the fiber, I start with F, and I restrict to the fiber, it uh, they need not be reflexive anymore, but it's reflexive outside the co-dimension two set, so I can take its reflexive hull and I get this, uh, this map. Now, but just looking at this, we see that the, uh, the, 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 the H zero of the, the reflexive restrictions that is upper semi-continuous, because it's upper semi-continuous even Without the WL, and when I take the WL, I can just gain more sections. 
And I also know that if the reflexive restrictions, they are generated by global sections, and the H0 is locally constant, that can only happen if this, if this map is, in fact, an isomorphism. Yeah? That sort of, if this sees all the global sections of it and generated by global sections, then this has to be an isomorphism. And so that, that means that just by computing H0, I should be able to, to get a, a criterion that tells us that, that the restriction of a sheaf is itself reflexive. OK, so let's see now. Now, 2 implies 3 out of the, of the, the theorem. So I remind you of 2 that, that uh, I'm assuming that these H0s, they are are locally constant. Now, if m is sufficiently large, then, of course, these, these m's powers of omega, they are just globally generated, because I assume that, that omega x is essentially ample. And so then, when the h0 is constant, then that means that, that the m's power of omega x over s is, in fact, flat and computes with base change for m sufficiently large. Now, how do I get for small values? But there's also so, uh, uh, this uh, assumption that is uh, very important, but I think sometimes I forgot to, to, to write down that I, that I need that, uh, that, uh, that. Actually, this doesn't make sense, what I have here. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. So, so. Uh, so I think I sort of jumped ahead here. So, so if, if, if I'm at a fiber, yeah, uh, then I know that some power of omega x over s, it, it will be locally free. Omega x s on that fiber will be locally free, say the capital M's power. Now, if it's flat and commutes with base change, then it says that the relative omega x over s to m, that also has to be locally free near that fiber. Now, once sort of I know that that's, that's locally free, then, then, the, 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 then there is this isomorphism. So if I, so if I look at the m plus m's power, it is the same as just the m's power times the m's power. And I should have thought that I cannot pronounce capital M differently from lowercase m, OK? And so that means if I know, know this for sufficiently large that it is flat and commute with base change, then I know it for the lower values as well. OK. Now let's see. 2 implies 1. That's probably the easiest. And so I assume that it's h0, those, they are, are locally constant. And by sort of the weakest version of riemann roch you know that the, that the self-intersection of the canonical class, that the volume is just the leading thing, the term as m goes to infinity. So if h0 is locally constant, then the leading the term of the Hilbert Bert, polynomial is also locally constant. And you see here that, that, that from this point of view, the converse is actually very, very su surprising, because I am, am saying that, in fact, if the leading the term of the Hilbert polynomial, or even Hilbert functions here, they are locally constant, then the rest of the coefficients also have to be locally constant automatically. Okay? And so, so let's try to prove this, in fact, fact sort of more generally. So let's assume that I have a flat projective morphism. And so, so you can assume it has semi low canonical fibers, that in fact it's OK if you just assume that the, that the fibers satisfy the SER conditions S2. And assume that I have a, reflex, a reflexive and rank one sheaf that is locally free outside the co-dimension two set in each fiber. Okay? And now let's also assume that if I restrict this L to the fiber and I take its W, then it is locally free and ample. 
And so then out of this, I claim that the volume is upper per semi-continuous, and the volume is locally constant if and only if L itself is locally free. Okay? And so the, 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 this is just a sheaf version of, of that divisor example that we saw. Okay? Now, we will then apply this to, to, to omega x over s, s to the m, where this power is locally free, and here one needs extra work for, 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 for the other m. So I get here for the multiple of this capital M, I, I get it out of this, this theorem, but for the other m's it needs some extra work. Okay. And so uh, maybe again it's just good to, to, to give an example to sort of see what can happen. So let's start with a family of degree three, four surfaces in P3, so just a family of K3 surfaces. Um, I assume that the special fiber, it contains a line, and that the general fiber has picker number one, okay? Now, then it's not hard to see that the line, so the, 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 I have this three-four, there's a family of surfaces. It's not hard to see that the line can be contracted to a point, and that will be my example x to c. And now I take two times the hyperplane class and just push it, it f forward. So that will be that, that sort of line bundle or divisor on the reflexive sheet. Now what happens on the generic fiber? Versus I contract the line in the special fiber, yet there's no line in the generic fiber, that means that my map is an isomorphism. So then the generic fiber is still the same K3 surface as I had before, so there the self-intersection of this is just 16. Uh, now, what do I have on the special fiber? Well, I have a K3 and I con contract a line. Now, the line has self-intersection section minus two, so it's better to to say that what I sort of push for where is two times H zero plus L. That's the, the thing that has degree zero on L. And so then you, you compute that the self-intersection number is 18, okay? So there's this divisor, it, it, it is Cartier generic fiber, it is Cartier on the special fiber, and the self-intersection jump. Now, what this also means that this X to C, uh, this is not projective, because I assume that the generic fiber has, has PCAR number one, so that means, means this L, or is divisor, is the only divisor that I have, but it's not a Cartier T, a divisor. So, 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 so here's a morphism, and this divisor on it that's ample on every fiber, but it's not ample, and, uh, and the map is itself not projective. So, so it is examples like this that we, we, we try to understand, or sort of try, try to say that this is indeed a typical thing. Here the self-intersection jumps from 16 to 18. So the hope is to show that there's always a, that it always can only go up, and if it's constant, then everything is nice, then I have a relative Cartier divisor. Okay, and so, and so let's start with the n equals two case, the surface case. And so now here if I, I take my L and I restrict, you know, I uh, uh, assume that it's locally free outside the co-dimension two set, so here, I can have problem only at, at finitely many points, okay? And so uh, now this, this, uh, this uh, means that this difference, okay? So the, 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 if I just look at the generic fiber, if I just, just it, it, it does the same, and then so this exactly picks up the lengths of the quotient, how much I get if I replace the restriction by its double dual, okay? So it means it's always larger or equals zero, okay? Now then let's then write down riemann roch both on the special fiber and on the generic fibers. So 
then so to I, I start with the self-intersection, there's the quadratic term, and then there's the linear term that you know what it is. There's no point, point writing down. We don't need the actual form, and there is Euler characteristic. And then I have this inequality between them. Now, uh, you, you, you see that already shows the semi-continuity because these are the leading terms. So that means that this intersection number has to be larger than that intersection number on the right. What happens if they are equal? Then we can cancel these out. And then I assume this morphism is flat, so the Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf also cancels out. So then I get, get this in quality. And here some sort of magic happens that then I can cancel M. And then I get a B0 equals BG. Okay? And so, um, and, and so, now, but, 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 but that's sort of the unlucky thing is that, that you see this works only for surfaces. This will not work for threefolds. So because for, because if I do the, this here for threefolds, then, then I would have a degree two polynomial in M here, a degree two polynomial in M. And if a degree two polynomial is larger than another degree two polynomial, that's only an inequality between their leading terms. But, but if a line is always above another line, then they have the same slope. Okay? So, so, so there is this, this seemingly strange coincidence that happens for surfaces. And so what to do with higher dimensions? Okay, well, and so uh, th 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 there is an induction. It, it's in fact a non-trivial step because, because this assumption is not exactly set up, up, uh, up to be in inducted right way. But so basically, we can reduce to the case when, when this L is locally free except at some isolated points. Okay. Now, the, then remember uh, what the local growth and left set says. So it says that if you start with a singularity, this x will be one of those points. And growth and says, well, look at the Cartier divisor. Well, here, my special fiber gives me, me this Cartier divisor. But then if I look at the Picard group, group of the puncture neighborhood of x, of course, I can restrict it to the the Picard group of, group of the punctured neighborhood of X inside, inside the divisor. And the growth and left shot says that this map is an injection, which is, is, is e, e, exactly what we want. But unfortunately, under uh, the assumption that the depth of the divisor is at least three at the point X. And unfortunately, in the in the semi canonical case, we only know that this depth is at least two. Yeah, so, so that's, that's one problem we have. And so, and so well, after you know, I, I tried to construct some counterexamples a long time, and then I failed. So then I saw that maybe be in in uh, in 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 fact, Grothendieck did not write down the optimal form. That's, that's, I had a hard time believing that, but, but it seems that uh, that happens. In that the right assumption is that the depth is at least two, but the dimension, dimension has to be at least three, okay? Which is nice because that's exactly the, where we are up. And then, well, it was proved in, so I proved the semi log canonical case, then I think that's a very nice argument about and the young arbitrary normal case, and then, and then out of this, uh, one can derive the general uh, case. And, and if you understand, now the young has a nice argument for the general case, or let's see, let's see. yeah, okay. So, so uh, there is now a much better argument for the general case, but I haven't seen the argument. But, okay. Hmm? Ah, it's already there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, actually, 
So a lot of that's the depressing thing. Some of these things I just tell the young, and the next day it's in the Stacks project. And, <laughs> and I still have to write my own article. Okay, so <laughs> anyhow. Okay. Now, I think it's just as a, an, an, a side, I would like to mention another oh, their, their, their case where, where, where sort of the same principle Oh, operates that, that some, somehow it's hard to change a Hilbert function without changing the leading term. Yeah? So if you, you have some big divisor and then you subtract a little bit of it, well then, then you know that is H zeros, they can go only down. And the question is, well can you arrange that they go down only a little bit? And the answer is that, that that, that no, if the leading term is not changing, then in fact the Hilbert function is not changing. Okay, so that's just, uh, yeah. And so, so there seem to be several instances that, that, that sort of you need to know only the leading term of the Hilbert function and the other sort of automatically follow. I don't, do not completely understand why this happens. Okay, uh, now then, then so, so let's get back to the to the the main existence uh, theorem that if we that if we fix the dimension and the volume d, then there's a projective of course moduli space that parameterizes stable varieties of dimension n, where the self-intersection of the canonical class is exactly d. Okay, so now. Uh, again, this uh, is a characteristic zero theorem. There are actually numerous problems in, in positive characteristics. And then I just would like to go through sort of the main issues that, that, that sort of go into this, this proof and maybe it, 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 it sort of generalizations. And so, so uh, one is that well, we need to construct our, our, our limits. So if I have a, a sort of, sort of a nice family of our, our stable varieties over a punctured curve, then somehow I would like to, to extend it across the, the puncture, at least after some base change. That's already for our curves. Uh, a uh, uh, base change uh, might be needed. Now, uh, and so then, the, 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 if you start with smooth varieties, then usually in the limit you get some reducible examples. Now that, that means that you have to understand the, the, the cases when your family is it, itself, and you start with the family of reducible varieties. So you have to construct the limits even if, if you start with, with uh, parameterizing reducible uh, varieties. And now, then there's this boundedness question. You have to make sure that you do not get sort of too many limits. You construct the limits, but maybe they cannot form a compact space somehow. And now then at, at some point you would like to add the boundary to it. The same way as for curves, you at some point you get stable pointed curves. Here you would like to add, well, the right thing is adding not points but divisors. Yeah. And, and so to, to see what you get there. Now, in the irreducible case, when I have some fa families of irreducible varieties, then I think I already went through through the construction of the limit that, that it just relies on, on the minimal model, model program. Now, uh, it, 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 so there are some issues with the minimal model pr pr program that is not, not fully known, but, but Haken, McKernan, and Shu, they prove the case that's needed uh, uh, for this. So, so, so that this is, is is done. Now, uh, well, it seems to be at first easy to construct the limits when the, when the general fiber 
is reducible. So for curves, it's actually very, very easy. Start with your family. You just normalize it. You construct the, construct the limit, and, the, the, and you glue together. OK. Now, and, and so the first two steps are OK in higher dimensions. You can normalize it, construct the limit. But it seems that gluing is much harder in higher dimension than for curves. And uh, I don't want to get into it in sort of large, in, in too many details. So I just uh, want to have sort of one simple example. Uh, and so just for illustration, so I start with two copies of P2. And then the, you know, the and the coordinate lines, okay. And now I would like these two copies to get there along the triangle. And so, how do I do, do I glue with this? So, for instance, when I glue this with this, well, so that this point has to go there. So the intersection points have to meet. So that means that here I have just a C star, and here I have a. C star here, so the gluing is then, then by some number, you know, lambda x. So all I can do is just to multiply by that copy of P of C star by some, some lambda x. And so then, well, since I have these three coordinate axes, I get lambda x, lambda y, and lambda z in C star. And then I ask you, well, the object I, I get, when is it projective? Well, is there anyone who has not heard the answer yet and can tell me the answer? Well, no guesses, so I have to give the answer. It's present precisely when the product of these three numbers is a root of unity. And so, uh, you know, that's not always projective, and, it's, or, and this is not an, an algebraic a condition. Yeah? And so, in, in, in fact, I mean, this is not surprising because uh, when you do this gluing, then, of course, it's a singular K3 surface. Yeah? So it's a limit of, of the double covers of P2 that ramifies along a sextic, when the sextic degenerates to sort of double of this, this triangle, then and you get exactly this. So sort of this is really just a baby version of that example that inside the moduli of K3 surfaces, the algebraic ones, they, they form a countable union of, 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 of divisors. So, yeah, so, so this just, 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 just a small hint that, that, that sort of gluing is, is actually can be rather tricky in, 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 in sort of higher dimension. Well, and so, so I mean, you, you have C star cube, yeah? And so this condition is the, uh, is, is, is the union of countably many, 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 many hypersurfaces. I mean, yeah, so, so, so it's a pro-algebraic condition, but it's really a countable union. Yeah, yeah that you have. Okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, the other the question that did not come up seriously for, for curves is, is, well, sort of just... Trying to understand, uh, understand these limits, maybe they get uh, very complicated. So, so, so the two things that can happen that makes them, them complicated. One, one is maybe the singularities can get sort of worse and worse. And, and the other is that maybe they, uh, there, are, uh, the, the, there are some limits with more and more irreducible components. And so I want to concentrate on, on the second question, so if, if, if I have a stable curve, yeah, and then let's look at its at the irreducible components of the normalization and the, the PIs, they are the preimages of the nodes, yeah. Then the, the degree of the canonical class of C, it is just 
is it, it can be computed uh, one component at a time as the degree of the canonical class of CI plus the number of images of nodes that lie on, on that component. And now, since the canonical class is ample, each summand on the right-hand side is at least one, so that means that I know that there are at most 2G minus two irreducible components in the stable limit. Now, it seems that in the surface case, I can do the, the same thing. Again I, again, again, I have a stable surface, and then I just normalize it, then I get irreducible components SI. And now, where two components intersect, I expect it happens along some curves where, where S has nodes, so then I have the surface SI, and I have these divisors DI. And again, the self-intersection of the canonical class is computed just before. I mean, I just have to, 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 to square. And uh, again, I know that these, that these are ample. But, 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 you see, by ample, now I mean that some multiple of that is ample. So that means that, in principle, these are just positive rational numbers, yeah? And now, well, I have a, a sort of a nice, say, integer here, and I write it as a sum of positive rational uh, numbers, okay, squares, that sort of cuts down a bit, but, but still, I don't know how many I have, yeah? Uh, and now, well, you might ask, uh, well, sort of, can these be actually very small? And yes, they can be actually small. So, I mean, just a, a simple example I just wrote down after a few minutes of thinking. Let's look at this projective space with weights 1, 2, 3, and then a divisor in O, O7. Then you compute the self-intersection is 1 over 6, okay? Now, if you are sort of smarter and you think hard like uh, Alexei and Liu, they came up with an example of example of a stable surface where the self-intersection number of the canonical class is this. And this is pretty small, yeah? This is a, a, a pretty small number. Now, in, in some sense, this is not exactly what we need. We always, so, you know, if the surface is not irreducible, uh, the, 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 then there's always a divisor part there. And for, for that, I proved long ago that it's 1 over 1764, okay? Now, in fact, this is the year that Goldbach Bach died, but I don't think it's particularly relevant for this, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, and, and so the, the, then, then the really interesting thing, thing theorem here, it was proved by Alexeyev and in dimension two, and where it is a very, very hard theorem already in dimension two, and then generalized by Haken, and McKern, and Shu, that if you just look at these, at these pairs, let's say, so they're sort of more general, but for now, just the pairs you obtained by sort of degeneration of, or, or, or the irreducible components of stable pairs, pairs and then you, 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 you compute this, this self-intersection, then you get a subset of the rational. And this, this will satisfy the descending chain condition. In fact, for instance, there, there is a positive lower bound of this set. And so then if this lower bound is, say, one divided by, say, m, then that means that, that if I know that the self-intersection is fixed to D, then in the, then the limit I get at most D times M irreducible components. Now, I think that, that sort of the problem is that, so, 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 so I think that for N equals two, a lower bound is known, but not for high, already, in dimension three, we know there's a lower bound, but, but there is no lower bound written down. I mean, it sort of has to be sort of, sort of small. It has to deal with, you know, things like this. So, so it, it, and yeah, but, 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 but at least in principle, uh, we have an answer that can be 
only a bounded uh, number of irreducible components of the limit. Now, uh, uh, we understand the singularities is uh, much less. So these results of, of Alexeyev and Haken, McKenna, and Shue, they in fact, in fact, control the singularities as well. But, but so and now, at least for surfaces, we, we start to have some result that sort of reasonably effectively control the singularities, at least on the, on the degenerations of of smooth surfaces. I believe these are not completely done yet, but, but uh, papers of Rana and, and Uruzua, they, they uh, deal with several significant and cases, and there is hope that, at least for surfaces, there will be a complete answer here, uh, here sort of soon. OK. Uh, now then, uh, then the. The next step is stable pairs that, that, that uh, where, where things are actually not as good as, as, the, as, as, as the boundary last case before. And so what are these, these stable pairs? So, so you see the, that's what, so what, I mean, the curve case, I just had a curve with nodes, and I marked with some, some, with some smooth points, and maybe marked them with some numbers. Classically, they were marked with coefficient one, but sort of now we think maybe the coefficient can be anything between zero and one. And so we try to do the same thing. I start with a semi-normal well, projective or proper variety, and then that they write on an effective divisor, and so sort of the curve case, the point is not supposed to be at a singular point, so then our condition is now a divisor so it should not be contained inside the singular locus. I call these Mumford divisors. And now I, I so the, then there are the other assumption that, the, that Kx plus delta is supposed to be, so supposed to be Q Cartier, so if I, Multiplied by some number, I get an actual L, L Cartier divisor. And uh, there is a semi log canonical condition which says if I write down a log resolution and I just pull back uh, the, 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 the canonical class, then, then I get, get I, and I write it as the birational transform of delta, plus these are, are, are the exceptional. Now, divisors, then the semi log canonical condition is that these AIs have to be, have to be less than or equal one. And so, uh, yeah, these AIs have an unfortunate that history it used to be at the other side. So, if I look at, at for instance, my book with, with Mori that uses the minus AI, and then, then, then the younger folks like to add one to. Uh, let's see. I think they look at actually one minus AI that they like to use. So, so yeah, that's that's sort of unfortunate, but but you have to get used to it. Okay. Uh, and so now then the question is, uh, what should be a stable family? Okay. And so let's start with sort of just over a smooth curve. And so I have this Q card here. The condition that we worked so far, that if I look at the relative canonical class plus delta, that is Q Cartier, and all fibers are stable. Now, if we are over a reduced base, then I say this is stable if and only if it's pulled back to, to, to all smooth curves is stable. Now, this is you might say that we are uh, sort of lucky here, but, but, but one can, can prove that this is, in fact, a reasonable condition. And various other things that you try to write down, they, they are, are, are the same. So in, in, in fact, fact, this seems an unnatural uh, thing to do, but this is the nice quick way of, of, of getting it right. And so the, the Problem we have we have uh, so far that over an arbitrary base I don't know what the right condition should be. Okay, 
And so um, what's the, the uh, main, main problem? Well, so before I go to the main, so, so, so the main problem is that the, that, that the divisors them, them, themselves are not flat over the base in general. And, and so, and this makes it just very hard to, to, to deal with over with sort of the, the, the nilpotent part of the base. But, but it turns out to be that there is one, uh, one case where everything works out, out nicely. So if I have, have this boundary divisor, and I assume that all the coefficients are in fact larger than one half. So they are supposed to be between, between zero and one. And let's assume that they are all, all larger than one half. So then, I say that these divisors, they J are in fact, in fact flat over the base, but that's not much, but the fibers are in fact reduced. So that means that, that if I take the limit, I do not have to worry about embedded the points. That was exactly the, the problem we had be, before. I had these, these divisors on, on degenerating quadric surfaces, and we did pick up an embedded point in the special fiber. So maybe I have some time to outline the proof of this. And so, um, so, so I, I, I just want to focus on sort of that divisor. So I drop the, the, the subscript, and I write the, the rest of the sum as just delta. Now, the easy case is when I have relative dimension one, okay? Uh, because then, well, so, so, so in the Mumford for, for case, these divisors are supposed to arrive only at, at the smooth point in the special fiber. They do not pass through the, the singular point. So that means sort of locally, I just have a, a a product, and I have a curve in it. Now, so the what would be bad? Well, the bad case would be if the curve is something like y squared equals x, so it's tangent to the special fiber. Then I get something non-reduced there. It's no embedded point, but it's non-reduced, OK? Ah, but you see that if this comes with coefficient 1 half, yeah, then it is the boundary case. Then the restriction is I get this point there with multiplicity 2 because of the tangency coefficient 1 half. That's 1. So that is just low canonical. But if the, the coefficient is larger than 1 half, that is not low canonical anymore. And so that means that if the coefficients are at least 1 half, then these, these points are picked. They cannot come together in the curve case. OK. Now, then there's an old case that, that works well if the divisor D happens to be, happens to be Q Cartier. Now, we almost know that X is called call it. This is not quite true, I'm saying. But so basically, you, you and, and so there are lots of technicalities. But, but, for, the, but for the next two minutes, you can assume that x is, is, is called Mac, Macaulay. And basically, you can assume that the divisor is, in fact, Cartier, not just Q Cartier. And so that means that when you look at the intersection of the special fiber, which is Cartier, with this divisor, then you get something that, that is unmixed. And, uh, and uh, n equals 1 case tells us that it's generically reduced, and so it is reduced. OK. Now, what to do then with the general case? Well, so first I, I, I'd say that, 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 that instead of proving that, that, the, that the intersection of two varieties is reduced, it is equivalent to saying that the union is seminormal. 
Okay? So if you think about it, the simplest case is when you have a line and the curve tangent to it, the intersection is non-reduced. So if there is a line and the curve tangent to it, the intersection is non-reduced. And of course, the semi-normalization is that you make them intersect transversally. Okay? So, so and in fact, sort of, that's basically the proof of this statement. Okay. And so, uh, now then, well, we can handle the case when this divisor is Q Cartier. Okay? So, so let's make it, 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 it Q Cartier. And of course, we all know how to make a divisor so Q Cartier, sort of in general, to, to, to sort of blow it up. You know, with any ideal shift, if you blow it up, you, you get a principal ideal shift upstairs. But then there are all those exceptional divisors that, that sort of make your life hard. And, but if you understand the minimal model pro program enough and you talk to, I think, Haken and Shu, then they say that sort of in this case they can make this divisor Q Cartier without introducing any e e exceptional divisor. So again, the prime example is if you have the three-dimensional quadric cone and sort of a plane in it, then, then uh, the, that's not Q Cartier, but if you blow up, then you introduce only a, an exceptional uh, set that is just a, just, uh, just a P1. Okay, so, so instead of a two-dimensional exceptional set, you just get P2. So you can do the, the, the same thing here. And now you, you, you can even arrange that minus the birational trans form of D is, is, in fact, relatively enough. Okay, so now then upstairs I have this natural exact, exact sequence, and let's push it forward. Okay, now then, so um, I think this is very similar, you know, I mean, this is the standard thing to do, and I think that Carl Schwitt, Schwitt had actually many e example like this, so it would be nice to prove that this is, in fact, zero. And it sort of looks nice because, so minus x0 prime minus d prime, just, just out of this is g linearly equivalent to, in fact, this. And you know, this looks exactly like our, our, our standard vanishing theorem, the canonical class, plus there is a boundary term, and then, you know, I made minus d prime g in f, so that means that, that, that is a g in f term. And so that means that you hope that, that sort of the general Grauer and Riemann Schneider there, there tells us that this is zero. Now, unfortunately, there are some technical issues, some low canonical centers come in, and it's not quite zero, but, but Ambro and Fujino. Oh yes, there is this fee, there is this free phone here. That's an Apple phone that has been basically pinging already during Carlos's lecture. And, and so anyhow. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, so then at least they say that this has no associated primes that contained in the support of this X0 plus D. And then if you see that, see that is the case, that means that this map has to be zero, yeah? So because this is supported on x0 plus d, and this has no associated point supported there. So even though this is non-zero, then this map, map is zero. So, so then I get that, in fact, the, the structure shift of x0 plus d is exactly the push forward of this. And now there is a, there is a small easy lemma uh, that you prove that if there is a proper by a rational map, so you should imagine that, that, that sort of this is x0 plus d, and this is x0 prime, prime plus d prime. By rational means that it's by rational on the irreducible component. And we know that the push forward of the structure shift is just the structure shift. Then y prime seminormal, which we know because we made d prime q Cartier, that implies that y seminormal. And so that's exactly 
exactly what we, we wanted. And I think this is a good place to, to stop, actually. And so, so um, the the second and the third con condition, it will uh, they will hold not for all m, but 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 but, but, but some. So so the multiples of, of 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 some m. So that's part of the the problem we have. That that. It should, it should, but I, I don't know, no completely. Yeah. Yeah. One last question, maybe. Would we fund to prove that lemma for us? Hmm? Would we fund just to prove that last lemma for us? Or that well, and so, uh, okay, so, um, okay, so here is y prime. Mapping to y, and let's write down here the semi-normalization of this. Okay, now the now so and then well, you show that it's sort of just factors there's, uh, through this. Okay, so y if you take the phi bar product, so y prime, sorry, y prime cos y s n. So yeah, so I. I think you have to prove that this is a partial semi-normalization, but this is semi-normal, so this is an isomorphism. So, so it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, this is the proof. 